Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad in which we will discuss rates of return using arithmetic, geometric, and dollar weighted average. These topics are covered on the CPA as well as the CFA exam, also in an essential or principles of investments graduate or undergraduate course. In this session, I will explain those methods and I will also work them using Excel sheet and show you the advantages and the disadvantages for each method. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlists. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people and connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to supplement and complement this course as well as other courses, the CPA exam, the CFA exam, CMA exam. If you're looking to add more resources to your education, check out my website. We're going to start by talking about the holding period return or basically your rate of return for a particular period. I'm going to work a simple example with you first. Assume, let's assume you purchased a home. And this is, you know, this is how I'm going to, this is my home. This is my drawing. And you paid for this home $100,000. Okay, that's your purchase price. And what you did is you rented this place. You rented it. And the end of the year, you had $5,000 net rental income. So you made $5,000 from the rent. At the end of the year, you sold the house for $110,000. You sold it. If I ask you, what is your rate of return or what's your holding period return on this house? Well, let's let's think about it. Your rate of return is composed of two things. First of all, from the house itself, you made $10,000. So 110,000 110, minus 100,000. From the house itself, you made $10,000 profit. That's called capital gain because the home appreciated in value. Plus, from the rental, you made $5,000. So overall, you made capital gain of 10000 from the income 5000 and you'll divide this by your original investment. You invested $100,000. Simply put, your rate of return is 15%, which is 15000 divided by 15000 divided by 100000 your rate of return is 15%. And basically, this is how we compute the rate of return. Part of it is capital gain. And part of it is basically income. Here it's income. We might call it dividend. We might call it interest. So it's capital gain plus what you received in income from that investment. So holding period on a share of stock, basically the same, reflect either the increase or a decrease. This home could also go down in value and the price of the share over the investment period, as well as any dividend income. For the home, you have rental income. It is defined as dollar earned. You know, price appreciation plus dividend. For example, uh, to, to, to take a look at the formula, the ending price is 110, whether it's a stock or a home. The beginning price is 100,000. The rental income was 5,000 divided by 100,000. This is what I did. So the definition assumed that the dividend is paid at the end of the holding period. Otherwise, we have to take care of the reinvestment process, the reinvestment income. So we assume, we assume the dividend is received at the end of the period. So the percentage return from dividend, which is cash dividend divided by the beginning price is the dividend yield. So if I ask you, what is the rental yield? Rental yield by itself is $5,000 divided by $100,000, which is 5%. So this is the rent, my rent yield. But if we're talking about a stock, this is the dividend and this is the stock price. So it will be called the dividend yield. Same thing. So and we add the cap capital gain appreciation is 10,000 divided by 100,000 equal to 10%. 10% plus 5% equal to 15%. Okay, so dividend yield plus capital gain equal to the holding period return. Let's take a look at a quick example. The share of a, of a the price of a share of a stock is currently $100 and your time horizon is one year. You expect to receive cash dividend of $4, which is expected yield of 4%. And by the end of the period, you're gonna, the stock will be sold at 110. Okay, so basically 110 minus 100, you're gonna make $10 from the stock itself, plus $4 from the 
from the uh, from the dividend in total you're going to make $14 by investing $100 the total return is 14% your dividend yield is 4% your capital gain yield is 10 so your capital yield is 10 your dividend yield is four together they'll give you 14 percent now this concept also applies for whatever investment you are working with for example if we're dealing with bonds later well the interest is the interest on the bond is the income therefore you'll have an interest yield and capital gain appreciation now measuring investment return over a multiple period is a little bit more involved than a single period here we looked at a single period when we have it when we have more than one period then we're going to have to use a different measure measurement because think about it i know how much i made in one year 10 percent now the following year i might make 10 percent or something else so i have to compute the period which is now it's two years or it could be three years or four years so over several periods how do we do that so you might want to measure how well a mutual fund has performed over the preceding five years in this case you might have more than one measurement it becomes a little bit more ambiguous and this is what we need to illustrate we're going to look at an example to illustrate how we compute this so consider a fund that started with a million dollar this is what the fund starting with with money it receives additional funds from new and existing shareholders and also redeem shares of existing shares so the net cash inflow can be positive or negative so in addition to the million dollar throughout the year some people cash out more people and add money to the to the fund and this is what the fund looks like so it's very important as we read this graph properly in order to solve what we need to solve okay so I'm going to read it very very closely so this is the first quarter we started with a million dollar one million for that quarter we made a return of 10 percent well guess what a million dollar multiplied by 10 percent which is to be more specific multi one million multiplied by 1.1 will bring us to one million one hundred thousand this is the total asset before inflows then the investors added one hundred thousand dollar to the fund so they added one hundred thousand dollar now we have at the end of the quarter 1.2 million dollars so this is how we got went from a million to 1.2 part of it was a hundred thousand was a hundred thousand was part of the 10 percent and another 100,000 the investors put money the second quarter we started with 1.2 which is the the ending period we start the beginning period then we're going to take 1.2 1 1.2 million times 1.25 the return was 25 percent now we're up to 1.5 million then the investors added half a million because we made a lot of profit they like it so they added half a million we end up the second quarter with two million dollars i just made this up that they like the uh, that they like the fund it doesn't mean you know that's why but i'm just kind of trying to make it a little bit more interesting so we have two million by the second quarter we're starting the third quarter the third quarter we started with two million and the fund experienced a 20 percent decrease in value so we have 2 million and we're going to multiply the 2 million now by 0.8 because we lost 20 percent by 0.8 we're going to be left with 1.6 million so we went down to 1.6 million and the investors kind of panicked and they withdrew eight hundred thousand dollar they took out eight hundred thousand because they panicked now what happened we end up the fund end up the third quarter with half a million and with eight hundred thousand then in the fourth quarter guess what in the fourth quarter we made a 20 percent return so we're going to take 0.8 times 1.2 now we're back to 960,000. the investors put in another six hundred thousand dollar we end up the fund the fourth quarter 1.56 million so this is what we have so it's very important that you understand what you are giving because we're going to be performing some computation to find out what is the rate of return of this portfolio okay so hopefully you were you were able to follow so there are several alternative measures of performance with each its own advantages and shortcoming we have the arithmetic average which is the easiest one geometric and dollar weighted average these measures vary considerably so it's very important to understand the differences between them because it's very important when someone quote your rate of return you want to know is this arithmetic geometric or dollar weighted return because you will see we're going to have three different returns starting with the most simple and arithmetic simply put you made 10 percent 25 percent negative 20 and 20 so you'll add them up 10 25 
minus 20 plus 20 divided by 4 period, your arithmetic return is 8.75. That's pretty straightforward. That's it. This is the arithmetic, and this is most likely what you are familiar with. Now let's take a look at the geometric method. The geometric method is also called the compound rate of return or the time-weighted series. So it's time-weighted, time-weighted, okay, not dollar-weighted. So not dollar-weighted, time-weighted. So we don't take into account the dollar amount. We only take the time over the period. So the geometric average of the quarterly return is equal to to the single period return that would give the same cumulative performance as a sequence of the actual return. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to take, to take each period return and multiply it by the uh, next period as a compounding effect. And you will see how we place in the formula. So we calculate the geometric method by compounding the actual period by period return and then finding the single per period rate that will compound to the same final value. So what we'll do, we're going to take all the return, compound them together, and find out what is the net, kind of the net return. So in this example, let's take a look to see how we work this example. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to take the return of the first period. This is how, this is the formula. You will take 1 plus 0.1, 1 plus 0.1 times, you multiply it by 1 plus 0.25, the second period. You multiply it by the negative two, it means 0 0.8. So one minus, well, I'm going to, I'm going to put it one, one minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. Then you multiply this by 1.2, 1 point, 1 1.2, which is one plus 0 0.2. Let's just be consistent. One plus 0 0.2. Then what you do is you raise those one divided by n, the number of period, the number of period is four. Then you subtract one. So this is how you, this is the formula. Now I'm going to show you in an Excel sheet how you compute this and what does that actually mean? Because I know you read this, you may not understand what does that mean, but I'm going to show you exactly mathematically what does that mean. So if we perform this computation, if you, if you perform this computation, you're going to get a return of 7.19. Now the question is, do you understand what does that mean, 7.19? That's the question. So first, let me show you the formula. So this is the formula. And it gives us 7.19%. And by the way, mutual fund, they have to comp they have to show you the geometric average. Just, so, so just be careful. They may call it geometric average. They may call it the compound rate of return. Or they might call it the time-weighted series. But the point is, they cannot use the arithmetic. They use the geometric. And just FYI, the geometric from a mathematical perspective would always be lower than the arithmetic, equal or lower. It, will it can never be higher. So if you perform the geometric and you find out it's higher than the arithmetic, you made a problem. You made a mistake. So let me first show you how to compute this in an Excel sheet then show you what does that mean, Seven point one. you earn 7.19 on this fund. So first what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what does the 7.19 mean, and I'm going to show you how we compute this in an Excel sheet. So we can take any amount, we can take a thousand dollar, we can take a million dollar, we can take a dollar, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use one thousand dollar, because the geometric number, it doesn't care what amount you invested in. And what happened is, remember, our answer was 7.19. It means over the four, pe four period, we earn 7.19%. Let me show you. So if we take $1,000, the year one, we, we invested at 7.1 at the end of year one. So at the end of year one, we had $1,071.90. Again, we could use millions. We could use 10,000 of millions. It doesn't matter. Any dollar amount. We start period two. We start period two. So this is period two with this amount. $1,071. Again, this amount, it's gonna, we said we're going to be earning 7.19, and that's going to give us, at the end of period two, this is peri at the end of period two, one, $1,148.97. We're going to start period three. Period three, we have $1,148.97. It's going to grow at 7.19, and that's going to give us, at the end of year three, one million two hundred thirty one thousand two hundred thirty one dollars and fifty eight cent now we're going to start period four and period four we are starting with one thousand two hundred thirty one dollars and fifty eight cent it's going to grow at seven point one nine and that's going to give us one one thousand 
$320. So this is year four. So this is the number that we end up with. This is the number that we end up with. So what does that mean? Why did we do all of this? It means, it means, so what, what does the geometric mean? And why is it kind of accurate from a percentage perspective? It's accurate. So how how much did we earn? We did earn, we did earn 7.9, 7.19 over a period of four years. Because if you invest any amount, a thousand, a million, ten million, it's gonna let's assume a thousand. If you are if you put a thousand dollar in this re, in this fund, you would receive at the end of four years one thousand three hundred and twenty dollars, which is your actual rate of return. Your actual rate of return is seven point one nine. 7.19. This is what it means. This is what it means. So remember, the average arithmetic, it gives us 7.85%, which is not true. What you did. In other words, if you put that $1,000 in the bank at 7.19, you will get 1,320. That's why it's more accurate. So it's showing you the compounding effect, the compounding effect, using only percentages. And why am, why, am, why am I emphasizing percentages? Because you're going to see in a moment, we're not taking into account the dollar amount. So geometric mean always use percentages. Now, how do we compute the ge geometric mean using Excel sheet? So basically what you do is you, you put your return 0 0.1, 0 0.25, negative 0.2, and 0.2. Those are the four rate of return. And what you do is you use this formula, just as simple as that. Let me just show you the formula. You would go to geo mean, and you highlight the rate and you add them plus you add plus one then what you do is because you added plus one then you subtract minus one so let's take out the one here kind of it doesn't so geometric mean you have to put plus one the formula would ask you to put plus one then what you do is you take the formula and you subtract one from it okay and you'll get 7.19 so this, it's very very simple way to compute it using excel sheet so once again you, you have the function geo mean and how do you well, let's pull the function why don't I do that so this way in case you are see how did how did how did how did we get here just go to the function and you put you go to the geo function miss uh, right here geo function you highlight the rate and you put plus one now why plus one I'm not gonna I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about this for now um, let me just because f13 not f14 F13. Okay. Then you will get 1.071. 1 then you'll take the answer minus one. There's there's a way to comp to do it in a formula to take the one out, but I just I don't want to complicate this. Equal to 7.19. So this is your geometric mean. So the geometric mean doesn't care about the dollar amount. It tells you if you took your money and placed it in another investment, you would have earned 7.19 equivalent to that fund. Now let's take a look at the third measurement which is the dollar weighted return so from the word dollar from the word dollar you should understand that this takes into account this takes into account how much was invested in every period how much was invested because it's taken into account the dollar amount in contrast in contrast to the geometric geometric all what geometric cares about is the percentage here it's going to find the percentage but it's going to take into account the weight, how much money you had in the account, okay? To account for the varying amount, which is, the, we, do, we did have varying amount under management, and that's why, before I proceed, that's why they use the geometric mean for the mutual fund, because the manager don't have control. If the investors want to take their money out, they have no control under how much money, how much money do they have under, under management. All what they, all what they can control is how much they can earn. This is why we use geometric return not dollar weighted average because the dollar weighted average of the investors take their money out and the stock market goes down then it would look bad for the manager so that's why we use the geometric to account for the varying amount under management we treat the fund cash flow as we would be a capital budgeting problem in corporate finance and compute the portfolio's internal rate of return here what we're going to we're going to look at this problem as an internal rate of return hopefully you know what this is if not I'm going to show it to you briefly, if not, go to my corporate finance. But basically, we're looking at this as a capital budgeting to find out what is what would be the rate of return to make this investment equal to zero. In other words, when you put your money, you kind of what's your rate of return based on the money that you invested? OK, so the initial one million and the net cash inflows are treated as cash is a flow associated with an investment project. 
in the year four liquidation value at, at the end of the year you're going to take out 1.56 is the final cash flow of the project so this is how you set up the problem to find out the dollar weighted return year one you invested 1 million also this is at the beginning of the period this is 0 0.0 at the end of the year you invested so this is the 1 million negative 1 million then you invested 100,000 and this is this 100,000 here year two you invested another half a million year three you invested eight uh no you took out 800,000 notice it's a plus year three it's a plus 800,000 and year four you invested 600,000 then you took out 1.56 million so the net was a positive nine six now what we do is we compute IRR and obviously you don't want to do this manually but this is the formula if you're computing IRR basically you set the formula equal to zero because NPV equal to zero for IRR and you say you invested a million then you invested 100,000 one plus divide one plus the rate the internal rate of return that you make your net present value equal to zero so this is the actual formula though you don't want to do this manually I'm going to show you how to do this on an Excel sheet Excel sheet so let's go back let's go to the Excel sheet and show you how you can quickly do this on an Excel sheet then tell you exactly what does that mean what does the NP and IRR mean when we find the IRR so back to the Excel sheet now we're gonna look at period zero and we have four periods four periods period zero we invested a million dollar then let me show you what we did in period one. We invested 100,000. We invested half a million. We took out 800,000. And in year four, remember the net was uh, 960,000. You know, we put some money and we took out one, the 1.56. Now we need to learn how to compute the IRR. It's pretty simple, very simple computation. We take, we say IRR, basically, we go to the function and we go. IRR the IRR function let me go down and you highlight the cells where the rate of returns are and you click on OK and you find out it's 3.38 it means based on the dollar amount invested now not based on you know be, now based on the dollar amount 3.38 you might be saying this does not make any sense I only earned the, the, the arithmetic was if you remember the arithmetic was um, 8.75 the geometric was 7.19 3.38 is pretty low why here's the here's the here's the question here why is the IRR is low here's why because when you had two million dollar under investment you suffered a loss of 20 percent what does that mean it means when you had a lot of amount invested the manager suffered a huge loss as a result it lowered your internal rate of return okay you did earn 25 percent at some point but you did not have that much money under management so that's why it did not so your rate of return really suffered with your that 20 percent decrease when you had two million under under uh, under uh, under management now you earned another two million uh, another 20 percent but at that point the investors took their money out so that's why this is called a dollar a dollar weighted return a dollar weighted average so it's taken into account how much money you had so notice we had three different returns for this mutual fund again which return do they quote for mutual fund they quote the the geometric why because it's a time series return it ignores it ignores all other factors do I'll take a look at this exercise and as a practice I will work three different uh, I will compute three different returns just to kind of make sure you are comfortable with this. Also, if you want to try this on your own, you can try it in the next session. I will have the example. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, let me know. As always, I'm going to invite you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, like this recording, share it, put it in playlist, study hard, and stay safe.